Okay, we got a 2004 cord um, replacing the sway bar link, which is broken in here. And you can get a good look at it right about. This is the driver's side rear. This end right here broke off. You can see it's supposed to go in that ball right there. It's a ball joint. Just got old rusted, came off. Anyhow, what we have to do is replace a nut here, uh, inside lower, and then up at the top from the front of the vehicle come in, like, and take that nut off. The whole assembly should come off. So we will, we have put some uh, PB brake on here, liquid wrench, whatever, penetrating oil, and we, um, hopefully it's loose enough. We'll probably use an impact. We might try a socket first and see if we can get it off okay so what we got here is a little problem with the bottom of this ball joint where it connects to the sway bar the ball obviously isn't connected anymore so when we go to loosen this nut off of the ball joint um, the ball itself the ball side is spinning so now we're going to try some channel locks on the ball and then use impact wrench on the nut and let's see if we can break it free Okay, now, I had no idea it would be, but the nut that just came off of that ball joint was so hot, it fell and uh, went to grab it. So, a word of caution. <laughs> it's only probably about four or five turns to get off, but that thing was blitzing hot right there. You've seen what happened, but it was real hot. Be careful. Heat caution. So, here's that lower part of that uh, link with the ball joint we just took off. It got so darn hot. Um, it's off now. We just gotta worry about the top part that connects to the uh, the shock support or whatever. So we're gonna try work that probably from the other side. Okay, well that just spun. We hit it with the impact wrench. So we're just gonna treat this like the one on the bottom that was broke off. We're gonna take this link bar off of here. Okay, same as the other one was. Since that ball's just gonna spin. And we will attach uh, channel locks to it here. Okay, get them on pretty darn tight. And I will try to get my uh, impact wrench up in there again. Tight, tight, tight fit. Maybe if I had a shorter impact socket, it would fit a little better. There we go, we're in. We'll try this. Is it off? No. Is it spinning? Must be. Well, it looks like it came off some. Can that be? I'll try this again. I need a better lighting system here. I have to get a smaller work light. All right. Okay. Back on that nut again. These vice grips and see what happens. I see the backside spinning on that. Okay. Take these off, and I have to get this fixed. Let's see if I can pull this rubber off here. There we go. Somehow, and it's heating up a little bit. It must have been spinning on that. I'll try this again. I don't know if it's spinning on the ball. Could be. Try to tighten this up a bit. OK. 
Okay, and a little more force. Give it another shot. Heating up. I'm sure that bad boy's hot. I see smoke. Alright. I do not want that nut to hit me because I know it's going to be a hot one. Okay. Alright, so here we are. Got the new uh, sway bar link here. Looks like it comes with uh, Zerk fittings to grease them, which is nice. This is just a value craft. It's like the cheapest thing AutoZone had. No big deal. It's about the only one they had actually in stock, so we got it. High mileage car, no big deal. Um, so, we're going to fit this on here. Couldn't really compare it to the old one here, but uh, eyeballing it looks pretty comparable. Looks like it's about the same length and everything. Okay, now, the one difference I see here with the replacement is that it did. Um, inner side of the ball joint they actually have a nut that's welded right onto the to the uh, threads of the bolt so I can get a wrench on there to, whenever I tighten it up or to loosen it you can see the stock unit didn't have that it just was rounded with the with the ball inside of it so that's a nice little feature it's gonna allow us to put it on without torquing up the the ball joint and the, the grease uh, cover or anything like that we'll get the wrench right on that and see, it looks like it's probably a, about a 14 millimeter. And a 14 millimeter it is. So hopefully there's enough room for me to put this wrench in there while I, while I draw the nut up tight. We'll see. So I guess I should put the Zerk fittings in first into each end. Uh, they can be lubed up after. I guess I'll wait till it's installed. I guess it has to be designed that way. So I will just simply take these things off. I'll have to get a, looks probably like a 9mm, very maybe smaller than that, probably a 6 or 7mm. Hopefully they tap these threads in here the right way. That will go, I'll wrench it in then. And the other side. Um, but looks like they settled in. I'm gonna have to use a wrench. They're straight, so. Okay. Looks like it's a eight millimeter size. Run those in nice and easy. Make sure it's not cross threaded. Like I did, I, I finger screwed them in probably about a quarter or half a turn. That's all I'd really go with my fingers. Now just nice and easy does it in there. This one here doesn't go in quite as easy, but it's definitely straight. Uh, just just run the grease in there to it. Let's fit the new sway bar link in. Since this is a sway bar, this is a sway bar link, we will put it right up in here. I'll pull the sway bar down a bit to get that in nice. And there we go. I will hand tighten some nuts on here. I'll just take these nuts right here, put one on the lower part. Nice. They're locking. Valuecraft sent me lockers. They lock on. I don't think I'll bother putting any thread lock or lock tight or anything on these bad boys because I'm pretty confident that they're just going to draw up and stay on there. Not really a high torque application at all. I found the right socket here with no extension on this bottom one. See what happens. I guess I should just put that wrench on the back side, that 14 millimeter. I'm guessing there's enough room for it to slide in there like that. Right. 
I'm not going to tighten it up fully until I get the top one. Um, get the top one uh, drawn up some. It's, looks like I'm going to send a wrench in through the top because of the way this is curved. If the wrench, yep. Okay, I got the 14 millimeter holding that nut on the back side in there. And will I need an extension? Yes. Let me grab an extension for the back. And I got about a two or three inch extension on there. Probably three inch extension. Uh, yeah, I think it's a three inch extension. My wife thinks that's probably 12 inches. I told her, whatever. Okay. Um, let's just go ahead and run this up on there. Be a good time for a electric screwdriver. That little drill. Not a big deal. Make sure that wrench stays there. there I didn't read up any torque specs on this yet but I can't imagine how technical this is going to be I will look it up I'm going to snug it down here pretty decent okay she's snug and now uh, the bottom one like I said, I didn't tighten that up full well. Give that a crank or two here now. Oh yeah. Probably only about two turns you left in it. I don't like using extensions. I like to be as close as I can, but I feel now. Nice. Okay. It looks pretty good. Can probably still get to that um, Zerk fitting there for the grease gun. It's still Obviously, you can get to this one up here pretty easily. So be able to, I'll probably shoot a shot of grease in them to make sure it's full. But uh, it's on. That should pass inspection. As it looks now. Alright. In the zone. For Argo zone.